everybody, this is Birch. I've been doing these numbers videos and it feels like people are enjoying them and that's good. But it raised one question for me that uh, somebody shot me an email, which is uh, kind of a negative <laughs> email I got, which is, why are you doing all of these? What's the point? I like comics that I like. If it does great in sales, what should I care about it? I, I don't care. Um, it was interesting that the email went on. I should address kind of other parts of this. I'm going to I'm going to take one email and I'm going to divide it into two videos. That's maximizing your your output. That's that's what we're that's what we're doing in 2020. Um, at any rate, it's true. I mean, it's true on the surface that there's all these financial numbers and they're they're interesting. You see trends over time. It definitely gives you a sense of kind of public behavior. Now, again, I I don't point this out enough in the videos. I, I I like to think that everybody just kind of knows this by now, but you know, these are sales to comic shops. They're not sales to readers. So by the way, if anybody's like, you know, right now, put that in the comments, I'll make sure I, I hit this. But I think this is well understood at this point. These are sales to comic shops and comic shops. Um, you know, they don't always sell everything that they order. Uh, there's not returnability in, in the vast majority of cases. So what you, what you order is what you keep. And that's why you've heard kind of this, this, these comments about comic shops having stacks of back issues they can't sell and other things. And that, that does happen. But do keep this in mind because there's been, you know, at times people have used this as a gotcha. Like, ah, aha, these are just sales to comic shops, not to actual readers. So, you know, there's probably stacks and hundreds of thousands of copies of, of you know, Miss Marvel hanging around. So, okay, well, number one. You know, Miss Marvel did not did not on any metric sell a hundred thousand copies of anything. So that just just putting that out there. But two, comic shops don't have the you know the the walking around money to just order things that that don't sell. Now they make mistakes. They over order on things. Marvel, you know, encourages them to order higher than they should on certain comics to get variant covers and everything else. Sometimes, yes, they do overship, and I've I've pointed that out in the the Miss Marvel video anyway that I did. But by and large, uh, you know, comic shops are trying to order what will leave the shelf. They're not ordering a bunch of back stock. So while it's true, absolutely true, and you see these sales numbers, it's not sell through to actual readers. And that would be a fascinating um, piece of data if we could get it. I, I would I would love to see that because I think that would tell a very interesting story over the long span, over 10 years more, et cetera. Um, you know, comic, the, the comics that are being sold to comic shops are, are trend wise, meaning the, the, the rises and the falls are going to be very similar to what people are actually buying. No comic shop is going to stay in business. Just, just randomly ordering way more than it is selling the, no, but no, no shop is doing that. That's just not happening. Um, you know, mistakes happen, but if that's why you look at things over like a year or two years, it tends to smooth out those bumps and then you have a, a picture you can see. So, but overall, uh, going back to kind of the original emails, emailers point, you know, what does it matter if comics sell or don't sell? And I think there's a bunch of different ways that you can answer that. I, I mean, and I think it raises another question. It's really a question I wanted to get to in this video, which is I'll ask the question. And I'll kind of work my way backward. Um, uh, if, you know, people at Marvel said tomorrow, hey, we can't keep making comics that are, that, that, you know, that sell under 50,000. We have to, we, every comic needs to make a hundred thousand. That's the machine. We are going to crack the whip and this is what's going to happen. And that's what we're going to do. Um, would that be a good thing for you as a reader? And I, I'll ask it from this vantage point. If you were suddenly in control of Marvel and you have the people that are around you and you know, you could, you could certainly fire everybody you want and, and do whatever you need. Um, most people would say, let's go back to the, to the most recent success we had the time when things were going well, numbers are going up, trends are higher. Let's go back to there and start from there. Like, let's try and get back to that point where things weren't all screwed up and then we'll, we'll build and we'll try and grow. That is an effect, you know, if you've heard interviews from Jim Shooter, that is a lot of what Jim Shooter did. He looked at the line and he said, we're going to look at, at we're going to go back, not all, not all lines all at once. We're going to go back, we're going to find a point where things are doing very well, and then we're going to get to there again. We're going to reset, get back to there as we need to, and then we're going to grow like crazy. We're going to keep going. So if that was said today at Marvel, um, one of the logical places they would go to is, as I did the video, Civil War. They would go back and say, hey, when Civil War was going on, 
It sold a ton of copies, quarter million copies for every single issue of that event. Number one uh, bestseller every month that Civil War was out. And on top of that, we saw close to a, you know, what was it, a 20% or higher uh, increase in the title. Yeah, more than that. It's a 31% increase in all the books that were not Civil War. Of the ongoing titles, we saw a 31% increase to our line. We saw massive uh, graphic novel and trade paperback sales during this time period. It really, it really kind of turned us around as a company. We did it was it was great for us. Let alone how happy Disney was that they have some IP that they could spin off into a movie and and all the rest. You know, happy days. Um, keep in mind, this is during a time when the X Men was struggling a little bit too. It was not they weren't fully into the let's screw Fox, but I mean they they had a portion of their line that was uh, you know entering the weakest phase. Uh, with one exception, sorry, it, it, we had ended, we'd exited Grant Morrison's phase. We had gone into Joss Whedon's phase, and Whedon's phase was was okay. I mean, it, it sold well, but it, but Uncanny and the other titles around it, this was the start of the slide of X Men um, in terms of sales. You'll just have to trust me on that one until I can pull, you know, fourteen years worth of numbers on one screen. But regardless. Uh, that was, you know, they, so that was Marvel in some cases doing really, really well with some with some disadvantages. So, does that make you happy? Think about what I just said because a lot of people I talk to hate Civil War. They they think of it as this was the event that screwed Marvel up completely and everything else. But if you're a financial guy, if you're just talking about sales, you would you would kind of want the company to get back to Civil War as fast as possible. Your your goal would be like. Let's let's get let's go back. Let's do that, and then let's keep let's like Jim Shooter did. Let's keep going. You know, it, we can go all the way back to the '90s and other. But the challenge of you try and go back to the early '90s or the uh, you know the '80s, then you're dealing with a lot of numbers that had the benefit of the newsstand. The the only just huge huge success period that Marvel had, where you saw this kind of growth in the direct market. Is Civil War now? Certainly, you can also make the argument this: is why we need to dump the direct market and get back to the new stand. Yeah, okay, we could do we could do all those things as well. But my point is, if the company woke up tomorrow and said, "You know what? We're going for popularity. We're going for money. We're going for cash." Does that make it better for you? And you, you know, I, I'm. It really is something to think about because sometimes what makes lots of money, what's a mass market product. Turns out to be like Maroon 5. It doesn't turn out to be a band you actually enjoy filled with talented people. It turns out to be Maroon 5. Um, is that a good thing? Now, now, keep in mind, this isn't me arguing it. And so we should just be happy with what we've got. I'm not saying that either. So I guess I'm just being a dick all around. But, but in general, um, the idea of let's get back to really healthy, really solid, really stable business. I mean, the, the first challenge is I don't know how many people working in, you know, for the big two, really understand what that means anyway. I think the analogy I, I use a lot is, you know, how, have you ever heard this, like you put the, you put the frog in the water and then you turn up the heat until it slowly boils and the frog just never really notices that it's cooking because it, it just, it just kind of adjusts with the temperature. Same kind of theory with lobsters. I know that there's some people, this will ruin your lobster, by the way, but if you just throw lobster into water and then just slowly turn up the heat and, and, you know, bring it up to a boil. It won't scream, but if you toss it into boiling water, it makes a hell of a noise. Yeah, I'm going to have all the downvotes from PETA now. Anyway, uh, it's, it feels like that's a little bit what's gone on in, in the comic industry is that we've had this kind of, you know, I'd say 14 year or so, 12 year at least decline of a lot of numbers. And so you see people get really, really excited about a book selling, you know, 50,000 copies where, you know, 12 years ago that that was not a big feat. You know, that was that was, you know, down the line. That in some cases I think during when Civil War was going on, you were out of the top 50. And I did that that, you know, keep in mind Moon Knight, freaking Moon Knight number 8. Like not even a significant issue, number 8. Uh, would would be a top 5 selling comic today. And so I, it feels like the, the frog has been boiled in the water to the point that they don't, you know, people don't even necessarily realize that things are, are off track. Uh, but to get it back there, I think might be equally jarring 
for customers, for fans, because it would be like, like, again, if Marvel could snap their fingers and run Civil War again, they would do it. In fact, being Marvel, they, they like keep snapping their fingers 50 times in the course of a year. But that's, that's what they, where they would go to. And that may or may not be something that you actually want as a customer. That may wind up being pretty obnoxious. Uh, that may wind up being something that would, would wreck a lot of your comics. Again, think about it. Do you, did you like Civil War? Well, if, if you're a Marvel shareholder, if, if such a thing existed, you'd want them to do that. Again, you'd be like, okay, let's stop with the creativity. Let's stop with some of these uh, these writers who are, you know, really hot on the indie scene. Let's just let's let's give let's give Mark Millar his money. Well, let's have him come back. He can just write this comic. We'll chain McNiven to a chair and not feed him unless he puts out his comics on time. And that, there you go. That's just what we're going to do. We're just going to go back and clone that success. Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, to this to this guy's email, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, high selling great numbers does not equal quality the comic book you want to read. It doesn't. It, it might. You know, there are fans out there, Maroon 5, who are very happy with every single thing they put out. But then there's other people who, you know, have music of taste. And, you know, that it's, it's different, different, different strokes, man. Different strokes, different folks. Anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. And thanks for listening.